The Unknown Tennyson Poem Incident, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. This story comes from Reminiscences of H.P. Blavatsky by Bertram Keithley. She never at that time did phenomena, except once, when I recall her producing the astral bell sound for Mr. Crooks, the eminent scientist, and even passed the current through his hand and made a finger bowl ring and the water in it shiver. But now and then, things just happen quite casually. It might be of interest if I mention one or two. One is concerned with Lucifer, the theosophical magazine of the time. HPB always wrote the editorial herself, and also many other articles under more than one nom de plume, and she had a fancy for very often heading it with some quotation, and it used to be one of my troubles that she very seldom gave any reference for these, so that I had much work and even visits to the British Museum reading room in order to verify and check them, even when I did manage, with much entreaty and after being most heartily cussed, to extract some reference from her. One day she handed me as usual, the copy of her contribution, a story for the next issue headed with a couple of four-line stanzas. I went and plagued her for a reference and would not be satisfied without one. She took the manuscript, and when I came back for it, I found she had just written the name Alfred Tennyson under the verses. Seeing this, I was at a loss, for I knew my Tennyson pretty well, and was certain that I had never read these lines in any poem of his, nor were they at all in his style. I hunted up my Tennyson, could not find them, consulted every one I could get at, also in vain. Then back I went to HPB, and told her all this, and said that I was sure these lines could not be Tennyson's, and I dared not print them with his name attached, unless I could give an exact reference. HPB just damned me and told me to get out and go to hell. It happened that the Lucifer copy must go to the printers the same day. So I just told her that I should strike out Tennyson's name when I went, unless she gave me a reference before I started. Just on starting, I went to her again, and she handed me a scrap of paper on which were written the words, The Gem, 1831. Well, HPB, I said, this is worse than ever for I am dead certain that Tennyson has never written any poem called The Gem. All HPB said was just, get out and be off. So I went to the British Museum reading room and consulted the folk there, but they could give me no help, and they one and all agreed that the verses could not be and were not Tennyson's. As a last resort, I asked to see Mr Richard Garnett, the famous head of the reading room in those days, and was taken to him. I explained to him the situation, and he also agreed in feeling sure that the verses were not Tennyson's. But after thinking quite a while, he asked me if I consulted the catalogue of periodical publications. I said no, and asked where that came in. Well, said Mr Garnet, I have a dim recollection that there was once a brief-lived magazine called The Gem, it might be worth your looking it up. I did so, and in the volume for the year given in HPV's note, I found a poem of a few stanzas signed Alfred Tennyson, and containing the two stanzas quoted by HPB verbatim, as she had written them down. And anyone can now read them in the second volume of Lucifer, but I have never found them even in the supposedly most complete and perfect edition of Tennyson's works. Here is the poem by Alfred Tennyson, referred to in the article, published in the Gem in 1831. O sad no more, O sweet no more, O strange no more. By mossed brook bank on a stone I smelt a wild weird flower alone. There was a ringing in my ears, and both my eyes gushed out my tears. Surely all pleasant things had gone before, though buried fathom deep beneath with thee no more.